Hello, everyone. My name is Eric Newberry, and I am a PhD student in computer science at UCLA. And today I'll be presenting our paper, Yacht NFD, yet another named in a networking forwarding daemon. So forwarding an IP is simple. There is no state. Uh, there is one pipeline for all packets. And all the information of how to actually perform the forwarding comes from doing a longest prefix matching of a fixed size address in the FIB and then sending the packet on the longest prefix, prefix matching interface indicated in the FIB. Meanwhile, in NDN, forwarding is much more complex. We have two pipelines, one for each type of packet in NDN, interests, and one for data. We have in-network state through the pending interest table and the dead nonce list. And we have in-network caching through the content store. Beyond this, the forwarding plane of NDN is much more intelligent through the use of forwarding strategies, which have logic actually that can change how a specific interest is forwarded based upon various, uh, you know, logic which can actually be changed and set differently for different prefixes. So there exist multiple forwarders for NDN already that have been developed over the last decade or thereabouts. Uh, these target different environments. Some are intended for desktops and laptops, you know, more traditional computing environments. Some are intended for mobile devices or embedded devices, and some are intended to run at the network core. And there are different goals for different forwarders. Some seek to achieve high performance. Some seek to be extensible to allow new features for innovation in both research and application use, as well as some are intended to be easy to use by end users or application developers. However, existing forwarders have generally only meet some of these goals. They have high performance, but they have high runtime requirements or limited compatibility with all environments and hardware, uh, often requiring high-end hardware to actually achieve their, their true high end of throughput. Meanwhile, forwarders for general purpose computing environments, such as desktops, laptops, tend to often be unwieldy or complex, particularly with many of these, the stated goal is to you know, be easy to extend and use in research and development. But this can often be a bit difficult given the complexity of these systems. So the first forwarder we're going to talk about is NFD. NFD is a research prototype forwarder developed by the NDF team. And because of this, it is sort of thought of this as the de facto official forwarder for NDN. It is written in C++. Uh, it and the library it requires uh, have over 150,000 lines of code and result in executable over 400 megabytes in size. Now, NFD's strengths are that it is extensively documented, and there's actually a whole document written just about its design. Uh, and its design is quite effective. It, it, it nicely splits out the responsibilities of the different components of the forwarder based upon their role in the forwarding process. However, it is single threaded, so it can't, it is limited by in throughput by the use of a single thread. And moreover, its code base is fairly complex and features a lot of false modularity. And what this means is that it's intended that two components can operate without knowing how the other one works. You know, initially, this was this was may have been the case, but over the years, NFD has been in development for about a decade. Uh, new features have been added, and these barriers in some places have broken down. And now it is required that some components know how other components they interact with work, instead of just knowing the interfaces to them. Uh, another forwarder is NDN Lite. This was developed as a low overhead forwarder for use in constrained environments such as IoT. And one unique feature of NDN Lite that sets it apart from all the other forwarders is that it features, it actually integrates into the thread of the application using it instead of running as a separate process. Uh, and this means that it can only support a single NDN application with a single instance of the forwarder. However, it is quite simple 
uh, has a much simpler design than NFD, and it eliminates some things that we argue are not necessary for the proper functioning of the NDN protocol, such as NACs. There's also multi-worker NFD or MW NFD, and this is a fork of NFD that adds multi-threading and by splitting the pipeline up into a series of worker threads. Uh, it chooses which thread handles which interest through the use of hashing, takes the first K, which is set at runtime, uh, components the interest and hashes them to get the, for the thread number to direct it to. And data packets are instead directed back to the same thread the interest that requested them came on via the use of PIT tokens, which just are a piece of data attached to an outgoing interest that gets returned on data that satisfies said interest. So the strengths of multi-worker NFD are that it is multi-threaded and high performance. However, it uses 100% CPU polling on the threads that actually read from faces. And this can result in high idle CPU utilization because the threads are just effectively running in a loop, checking for new data, or so new packets to be received, even if there are none. So another forwarder is NDN DPDK, which is an extremely high performance forwarder intended for backbone networks. Uh, it was able to achieve up to 100 gigabits per second, which was unprecedented at the time. Of this was published in, uh, I believe it was 2018. It uses uh, DPDK, the data plane development kit, to actually bypass the OS network stack and actually achieve this insanely high performance. Um, its data plane is written in C, control plane is written in Go. And it dispatches uh, pack interest and data packets to different threads in methods similar to those used in multi worker NFD. Um, and the strengths of NDN DPDK is that it effectively shards data structures across threads to avoid locking between threads, and it has high performance. However, its weaknesses are that it only supports a subset of NIC hardware at these very high forwarding speeds, and it also, like multi-worker NFD, uses 100% CPU polling. Which, in the environment that it runs in, makes sense, because it's intended to run on backbone networks. So. Now that we've talked about what existing forwarders do, what we want it to do better in a new forwarder, what we want to do differently, and what we want to do the same. So in a new forwarder, we want high performance, a simple code base so that it can be easily modified and extended for use in novel research and applications, as well as compatibility with an ex the existing NDM wire format and existing applications. So that, for example, application design for NFD, which is the most commonly used forwarder today, do not need to change, for example, the NDM socket path or the wire format they use to communicate with the forwarder. Additionally, we want to apply the lessons learned from existing forwarder designs, what went well, what could be improved upon to actually since we're starting over from scratch, we have the leeway to actually change things in significant ways that would be difficult with existing forwarders. And so we developed Yacht NFD, yet another NFD, to achieve these goals. Uh, it is a multi-threaded forwarder with sharded data structures written in Go. It features a simplified design that is inspired by the design of NFD, but has a much smaller code base with much few, many less lines of code. Additionally, it reuses the existing application and forwarder interface standards that I discussed previously, and its design was influenced by the strengths and by an in-depth analysis of the strengths and limitations of these existing forwarders. So how do we actually accomplish multi-threading by parallelizing the NDN forwarding pipelines? Well, the interest pipeline features one write to a data structure, and that is the PIT, the pending interest table. However, PIT updates, so PIT's interests for the same name will update the same PIT, well, sorry, interests with different names will not update the same PIT entry. So we don't have to worry about two entries in the PIT being updated at the same time if they're for the same name. Meanwhile, all other data structure accesses in the NFD in the interest pipeline are read-only. 
Meanwhile, on the data pipeline, there are many more accesses to write accesses to data structures. Uh, so the solution we came up with to allow NDN pipelines to be parallel in the NFD is to use global instances of data structures that could be used read only and shard data structures across threads when in the regular case, we would need to modify them in the forwarding process. So here's a high level design overview of Yacht NFD. And as we can see, we have the link service transport split of NFD. And we have name hashing and PIT tokens uh, from multi-worker NFD and NDN DPDK. So essentially we receive a packet, it goes up through here, goes to a queue, gets processed by the forwarding logic, which access the PIT and content store shard and the dead nonce list, passes it to the strategy, and then it goes out and gets put in the queue for the send thread, which sends it down to until it eventually goes on the link. We have a global FIB, FIB and strategy table because these vary and frequently change as uh, the FIB is flattened from the rib and the strategy is set through management. And when updates do need to be made, they can uh, you can lock the FIB strategy table so that they can be made, but this is relatively infrequent compared to how often packets are actually sent. And so as far as data structures go, I mentioned the sharded pending interest table and content store. Now the pending interest table uses different types of lookups. So interest pipelines use exact lookups and say, okay, this is the one for this name, even though it is a tree, they, it still is looking at the exact prefix of the interest. Data pipelines, meanwhile, use longest prefix matching to actually you know, say, okay, what are all the PIT entries that this data packet can match? And meanwhile, the content store only uses longest prefix matching, except for in interest. For data, it does use um, exact matching to actually insert if one is not already there. However, the use of the CS is entirely opportunistic, so it's not a big deal if we don't have the data that would exactly match it. We can just send it on and the packet will, the forwarding process will still work, just maybe a little slower. Um, these are both a tree of names. So like NFD, we combine them into a single data structure for space efficiency. And uh, now we have the global FIB and RIB. As I mentioned earlier in the forwarding pipelines, all FIB accesses are read only and the RIB is kept separate, separate and periodically flattened into the FIB. And therefore we can have a FIB with simultaneous access to, to a global data structure. And we just lock it when we need to actually update it. So how do we evaluate our app uh, forward? So we simultaneously transferred three large files via NDN chunks and had each producer, we had three producers and three consumers running on the same known as a software forwarder. Each, each consumer requested a different content, you know, C1 from P1, C2 from P2, C3 from P3. And what we found is that the performance of NFD was pretty constant across all file sizes, 100 megabytes, one gigabyte, five gigabytes. Meanwhile, multi-worker NFD performed the best due to the use of 100% CPU polling and multiple forwarding threads. We note that the performance did decrease slightly uh, as the file size got larger, but this was likely due to losses you know, since they, we were measuring good put or throughput from the application there. Meanwhile, Yacht NFD increased in performance, increased in good put over the course of increasing file size. And we believe this indicates that Yacht NFD has not yet achieved its full forwarding performance, uh, even, you know, as we're using one gigabyte here. So as the files get larger, the good, the good put goes up to the average megabits per second. So what have we learned from developing NFD? We've learned that multi-threaded forwarding has inherent benefits to NDN throughput, as we saw with both multi-worker NFD and Yacht NFD. We also learned that garbage collection overhead, it can be significant and needs to be considered in the design of any high throughput system. 
uh, such as a forward. And we need to consider the impact of end-to-end -end forwarding and other applications. We had very high overhead with Yacht NFD, and that is not ideal. And this needs to be considered in the future, particularly on multi-purpose edge devices like laptops. As well as that, multi-threading doesn't always increase forwarding performance, as we saw, where in some cases, Yacht NFD performed uh, worse than NFD at smaller file sizes, even despite using eight forwarding threads. So for future work, we want to allow forwarding strategies to be dynamically loaded during runtime of the forwarder. So applications, for example, could request that a specific forwarding strategy they need for their specialized application could be loaded at runtime without needing to have to have them compiled in like they currently have to be in yeah, NFD and NFD. We attempted to do this, but it was very difficult to achieve and we left it to future work. Additionally, we want to add support for the MLSR software router package, which currently is unsupported because we did not implement a um, complex uh, component of the NFD management protocol. And additionally, we want to devise a way to utilize PIT tokens and producer applications. Otherwise, we have to prefix dispatch data packets due to a missing PIT token instead of having them only processed by a single thread. So they have to be processed by every single one if there is no PIT token. So in summary, the yeah, NFD is able to outperform NFD with a much simpler design. Multi-threaded forwarding in NDN is both feasible and desirable. And NDN forwarders can be both lightweight and effective at forwarding. So yeah, NFD is open source. Uh, we encourage you to check it out. It is MIT licensed. Uh, so please download it, play around with it, extend it, use it for your research. Uh, um, and I will be handing it off to questions. So thank you.